Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Warner, SAT Math Guru and Associate Professor of Mathematics. I've been tutoring SAT Math for the last 12 years and have helped over a thousand students with their performance, many getting a perfect 800 or near perfect score. In this video, I'm going to give some test taking tips for attaining a perfect 800 score on test day. Very important. If you are a student that is trying to attain a score of less than 700, then this video is not for you. Please do not watch it as it will actually hurt your score. Now, for the rest of you, all of the advice that I give in this video, you should use every time you take a practice SAT. This way, when you take the actual SAT, you will already be conditioned to take the test properly. Let's begin with pacing. On average, you have about 1 minute and 15 seconds per question. If you've been preparing properly, then this is more time than you need. You shouldn't need more than 30 seconds per question on average for the easy questions, 60 seconds for the medium questions, and 75 seconds for the hard questions. Let's look at the 20 question multiple choice section in detail. In this case, numbers 1 through 7 are easy, 8 through 14 are medium, and 15 through 20 are hard. So, in this section, you might need 3.5 minutes for the easy questions, 7 minutes for the medium questions, and 7.5 minutes for the hard questions. This will leave you about 7 minutes to check over your answers and spend more time on that one question that's giving you a bit of trouble. Let me just mention that I'm actually being very generous here. I can finish any 20 question section in about 8 minutes without rushing. This leaves me 17 minutes to spare to go back and catch any careless errors. There's nothing special about me that allows me to do this. When I take the test, I simply apply the same strategies that I teach to every one of my students. If you know these strategies, you will find that on many of the hard questions, you may actually need less time than you need on some of the easy questions. Now, how should you pace yourself properly so that you don't run out of time prematurely? Well, after spending about 30 seconds on any question, you should decide if you understand the question enough to finish it fairly quickly. If not, then mark it off and move on. Don't worry, it's not forgotten. You'll come back to it later. The worst thing that you can do is get hung up on one question. If you have eliminated at least one answer choice, or it is a gridding question, feel free to take a guess, but you should still mark it off and come back to it later. Make sure that you are using your calculator when appropriate but be aware that your calculator can slow you down if it's overused. One note about the 18 question section. This section has 8 multiple choice questions followed by 10 grid -ins. Keep in mind that numbers 7 and 8 are hard, whereas number 9 is easy, so you may want to temporarily jump from number 6 to number 9 and go back to numbers 7 and 8 a bit later. Now, after going through the test once, you can then go through each of the questions you have marked off and solve as many of them as you can. You should be able to spend 5 to 7 minutes on this and still have 7 minutes left to check your answers. If there are one or two problems that you just can't seem to get, let them go for a while. You can come back to them intermittently as you're checking over other answers. Okay, so you've answered all the questions and you have about 7 minutes left. What is the best way to check your answers? Do not simply look over your work. Start the test over and redo each question from the beginning without looking at your prior work. Ideally, you should try to use a different method than you used the first time. If you picked numbers the first time, at least pick new numbers. If you can't think of a different way to solve it, that's okay. Just do it again. Then compare your two answers. If they're the same, move on. If not, then take a little time to catch your careless mistake. To summarize, when taking your SAT, make sure you pace yourself properly, be aware of when you have spent about 30 seconds on any problem, and check over your answers the right way. Use this method on at least four practice tests before you take the real SAT. This way you'll be comfortable with this method and find that the actual exam will be a breeze. Pacing yourself properly will give you plenty of time to check your work and ensure that you get a perfect 800 or near perfect score. For more information on how you can get an 800 in SAT math or to have specific questions answered by me personally, please click on the link below.